After we had gotten our, our little submarine guy here all rigged up and ready to animate. So uh, let's go ahead and, and get him even further ready to animate. Now there's a couple of things I'd like to do before we actually start the animation process and that's uh, to create some some uh, shape or some um, some pose, pose libraries, some poses in a pose library so that we can easily or more easily uh, do some lip syncing once we get a voice in here, and I've pre-recorded that. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, do -do -do -do. If I go to the right folder there, come on. And then, okay, so let's open this up here. Hey there, my name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. Hey. Okay, so we're going to be animating him saying that. So, in order to do that quickly, we got to set things up a little bit first, and uh, this will make it easier later on for when you're animating him doing other things, rather than just, just one little piece here we're doing in this tutorial. So you want to get him ready to animate as, as much as you can possibly get him. So, we're going to create a new pose library right here. Make sure we have our... our uh, actually, let me turn my screencast keys on there. Uh, make sure you have part of the rig selected, and you'll go to the little... Spread Eagle Man there, the little man with his arms out. The the uh, active data active data button there anyways. And to go down to Pose Library and click New. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one Phonems. Remember I discussed Phonems in Part 5. Um, so let's, this first one, let's just add a new one. Actually, get rid of that. Let's put, a, put the, the uh, mouth in the shape that we want it to first before we add that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that layer off that has everything. Well, got to go up to this one. There we go. Don't need all the uh, the other bones and things, just the mouth controllers right here. So I'm going to select all those, and I'm going to go ahead and create a bone group for that. We're going to name this mouth. Actually, just mouth controllers. There we go. Okay, so now um, we only want that applying the, this pose library to only apply the keyframes. The way it works is it, it adds basically an animation or an, uh, an action strip, and for each pose that you do, it adds a keyframe in that action strip, the custom action strip. So we only want it to add keyframes to these selected bones. So the way we do that is right here insert keyframes on the current frame for all properties in the specified keying set. So we want to make sure that little key actually. Add new. Make sure that. Huh. Well, I guess that's later on when we're actually animating. So sc scratch that. Uh, go ahead and get rid of that, and we'll go ahead and give him kind of just a basic dull pose, or dull dull expression. So let's grab the corners of his mouth there. Just kind of drag those down. He's not really happy or sad. He's just kind of. It's kind of neutral. Maybe even purse the lips out just a little bit. Okay, so now we'll select that mouth controller group. Just hit select. Actually, I never did apply those bones to that, so we've got to select all those and then assign them to the mouth controllers. So now, if we had just one of them selected, we get select and it'll select all of them. Okay, so now we will create that keyframe, add new, and I'm just going to call this one blank expression. Okay? And now let's go ahead and have him smile. So we'll grab both sides there. Just kind of bring those up. And maybe open his mouth just a little bit. Just a, just a bit. Bring that down there. And clear out the movement of the of the uh, lip bone right there so he's not pursing his lips out anymore. So select all those. Put it just hit select. There he is. Hit the little plus sign. Add another one. We're going to say smile. Okay. And then we'll do one more just for him being sad. Sad, maybe purse the lips a little bit now. Oh, look, he looks so sad there. Let's go ahead and select all those mouth controllers. Add one more. Add new. Call this one frown. Okay, so those aren't really phonemes because he's not really, uh, you know, forming words per se just yet. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that now. Now, the. The first one I'm going to do is going to be kind of an E sound, and that's a lot like the smile. So if we hit the smile, go ahead and select all those bones, and hit this little magnifying glass thing here, it'll apply that. 
to our king set there. But I don't want it to be the actual smile, so let's just move it down just a bit, maybe open his mouth a little bit further. And let's just adjust some of these until it gets about to where you want. So that'll work. So we'll just go ahead and select those, go ahead and create a new one, add new. And this one I'm gonna name PH for phonum, and then underscore just to separate the words out. And we'll say E, okay? Now we're gonna just continue with what we're doing here, leave that mouth open. Gonna grab the corners, drag that down, and this is gonna kinda be a A, or almost a uh sound. A, so let's go ahead and select all those again, hit that. Oops, hit the magnifying glass, hit the plus sign instead. So add new, call this one PH A. Okay, and then we will go ahead and let's go ahead and select all those and hit Alt G to clear everything out. And this one's gonna be the OO shape. So kind of a OO, maybe open it up a little bit. Don't wanna go too far into the Bring that just forward. Don't want him to start pursing his lips at the same time, so that'll work there. So we'll go ahead and select, add a new one, add new. And this one will be ph underscore oo. Okay, and now um, almost kind of like the blank expression. Let's go ahead and apply that. This one's going to be like the m, mm, b, and p sound, the, where the lips are kind of pursed out a little bit. And we can kind of give him just a bit of a frown. Okay, so go ahead and select all those. The plus sign, add new, ph underscore m b b. Okay, so uh, those are really. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot more phonemes that are catalog that you can you can set up, but you can kind of get along with just kind of doing these basic ones. Um, we will need to do an f one, so let's go ahead and get that one ready. So let's clear all those out. Grab this guy. Move that in, maybe open the mouth just a bit. And then we'll go ahead and, and let's go ahead and have him frown just a little bit. Okay, now we'll select all those. Okay, add another one. Oopsie, hit the wrong button again, hit the plus sign. And we'll say ph underscore fv, not ev, just fv. There we go. Okay, and then. I guess we can just kind of create a generic one with the tongue out, so let's just clear everything out and grab that tongue bone right there and just kind of bring that forward. And this will be kind of where he's like, the th sound like, thank you, thank you, la, la, duh. I mean, whatever you would use your tongue for, it won't be precisely accurate as far as forming the words go, but uh, you can kind of give it a, just to show that he actually has the tongue in there. So, okay, maybe drag these down just a bit. Okay, so we'll go ahead and select all, go ahead and hit the plus sign, add new, ph underscore th. Okay, so uh, we have the blank expression, smile frown, e, a, o, m, b, p, e, f, v, th. Let's go ahead and do an uh, so kind of just a blank expressionless uh sound effect. So let's clear out everything, grab that chin open the mouth a little bit, grab the frowny bone, or the smile frown bones, and then maybe kind of like that. Uh, okay, let's so go ahead and select all, and plus sign, add new, ph underscore uh. Okay, so that should be enough to get us going. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab all those and clear all those out, and let's make this a little bigger split this window here with the diagonal lines there make this a little bigger for now and I'm gonna change this clicked and dragged with my middle mouse wheel uh, right here we're on the little clock for the timeline editor let's change that to um, uh, video sequence editor and now we're gonna add in a sound and Henry Seaworth there we go add that in if you're unsure how to record a sound um, if you check out the uh, the tutorial I did on the Mickey head tutorial series, uh, I go I show how to to get uh, Audacity, the program, and and get that and record with that, and that's exactly what I did for this. So, 
Um, we won't go back over that. Just check out that one if you are unfamiliar. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the waveform just so we can see what we're doing here. And if I go to playback down here on the timeline, if I scroll that back over, hit playback, and then say audio scrubbing and AV sync, then we can hear the audio hey there. as I'm scrolling, scrubbing back and forth. My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. Okay, so let's have a, the end of the animation stop when he stops talking. So about right there. So let's say one frame 140. Change that end to 140. Okay, so now let's collapse this window a little bit, and I'd like to zoom in on that sound clip there, so we can still see it. And I want to go ahead. Let's split this window here and change that to dope sheet, and then we're going to split this window here as well. Drag it up to where it's even right there and then merge these two together. Just click and drag on that diagonal line and click and hold and move it back and forth until it goes the direction you want it to. Okay, so now we've got our dope sheet. I want to change that to action editor. And I'm going to go ahead and change this, say new, and I'm going to make this say uh, Henry underscore Seaworth and underscore and we'll say verbal. So this will be the verbal animation of him forming the words. Okay, now um, I was talking about earlier with the, hitting the key, no active keying set, so we haven't started actually animating yet, but uh, let's uh, scroll. go back to the very beginning and go ahead and hit the automatic keyframe insertion, and now we can hit that. Well, there. I guess it's this key right there. Very confusing sometimes. But uh, now, if we go ahead and select those mouth controllers, and let me zoom in here. He's not started talking yet, so we just want that blank expression at the very beginning. Let's go ahead and hit that little magnifying glass there. So, so hey, so we'll go ahead and use that ph a there. And then the, the we'll go ahead and use that th with the tongue f shape. And then, and we can use the E, boom. And then we can go back to the blank expression, or let's go ahead and use that kind of the a uh shape. Hey there. So that looks pretty good, huh? There, uh, I can kind of imagine that, just putting that extra enunciation on there. Let's collapse that. Well, no, we're going to need that. Try to make as much space available as we can in this small 1280 by 720 area. But uh, now we can go ahead and use that blank expression. So, hey there! And he's ready to say, my, my, my. So we'll go ahead and say, mmm, right there. Say, mmm. My. my. That would be the A shape as well. My. my. Perhaps my e, my, my. and then we can use the name. We can go use that th again because it's almost the same mouth shape. Maybe my name. Maybe not. Go ahead and use the a there. Just go ahead and go through here and just get all these set up. Then we can kind of tweak them as we need to once we get uh, the base animation going. Go ahead and name with the M there. My name is, is so we can say uh we don't kinda have we don't have a blank slightly open mouth. So let's uh, let's create this grab this blank expression and uh, go ahead and apply that, and then let's just grab it and open it just a little bit so we can have zzz in, in, you know, shapes that we don't really see the inside of the mouth too much, but it still needs to be open. So let's grab these just a bit. Maybe. And we can just select all those now. And let's create one more pose here while we're at it. Add new. And we'll just call this one PH, capital PH, underscore, um, we'll just say S. So PHS. So there we go. Okay, and that should have automatically created a keyframe right there. You can see where those are all at. Good. 
that S again. Henry. C. What a repetition of the shapes here. Then the worth will have the OO shape for the W. And then the TH. And then back to the uh. Actually, we can probably just go to the blank expression now. Yep. So we and so go to A. Click that. And go ahead and put that uh, S on there, just so it's N. Sometimes these keyframes get a little too close together, like right there. So let's we can examine that right in here. We actually see all these little yellow orange dots. Those are the actual keyframes, and we can see that these two are right after each other. And we don't want that. We want a little bit of motion in between. So we're going to grab this A shape right there, and let's drag it forward a little bit, maybe two frames there. So. And that looks, and I, so go ahead and say I, and then between the I and am, we're going to have basically the same shape, so in between the two A's, we're going to say uh, and I am, um, uh, to the original blank expression. Okay, so we got his voice animated. Let's take a look and see what it's looking like. Let's go back all the way. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. Hey there! Okay, so that looks okay. Let's, uh, let's turn off the layer that has our bones so we can actually see just his mouth and not these squares in the way. So hit, hold down Shift, and you can click that layer, and it'll get rid of it. So let's, let's see what it looks like from about right here. So we'll go back to the first and hit play. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth and I am a submarine. Hey there! Okay, so that's not too bad. And I am a submarine. Okay, so Submar you can go ahead and get rid of this keyframe. I think that's a little bit too much there, so I'm going to just click on that top keyframe there. Clear that out. A submarine. <laughs> And this one's a little little off, so let's go ahead and turn that layer back on. Maybe make him so he's not frowning quite so much. This is what I was talking about, just kind of tweaking and making it look the way you want to after we get the base set up. Okay, so let's see what it looks like now. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. Hey there! And I am a Okay, so that's not too bad. One more time. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. That'll work. I'm happy with how that came out. Okay, so now we got the, the basic submarine. vocal stuff. So, let's go ahead and hit this little F right here, and that's going to save this data, black, data block even if it has no um, users. So we're going to make sure that's locked into our scene. We'll go ahead and hit that. And I'm going to go ahead and save this while we're at it. And uh, so now we can go ahead and hit this X, and we can animate the rest of the body um, uh, independently of the, the voice. 
So we can still animate to the voice, but now the, the actual mouth motion is going to be on a different animation clip. And then we'll merge those together later on using the nonlinear action editor, NLA editor. Okay, so we'll go back to the layer that has our rig on it. Let's go ahead and select all those. And let's turn off our automatic keyframes for now, Alt G, just to get rid of those. And uh, now we'll turn on the layer that has the other bones right there. And actually, let's deselect all those first, just to make sure they're not going to be adding keyframes to it. Let's go ahead and hit that layer there. We'll go ahead and select one of these, and go ahead and turn on our automatic keyframe insertion again. Okay, so let's start at the beginning, and let's have him where he's like, he's kind of cocking his head, like, hey there, like that. So we're going to start off. If you hit R twice, you can kind of just rotate however you want. If you just hit it once, it's going to rotate around the axis, the visible axis, in a circle like that. So we hit it twice, we can rotate how we want. So let's hit it twice and then come down like so, about like that. Then he's going to say, hey, and just a little bit, and then there, and then maybe tw turn it just a bit. And kind of come down, then Come down where he's my, and then he's going to toss his head my, my. name. name. Is. is, and maybe tilt it just a bit. talk now let's go to uh, skip to the very end this will be the last keyframe so let's see what his head looks like with this movement we've done here hey there my name is Henry Seaworth and I am a submarine hey okay so it's not too bad it's a little little too jittery here and there so we'll come back in here and kind of clean that up so let's get this all these keyframes here in the visible view there so we can kind of see which ones we need to, uh, to mess with hey there so, hey there, there. My name is Henry Seaworth. Okay, so I think we can get rid of this one. I don't want him tilting his head so far down. It's Henry Seaworth. And I am gone. Maybe, maybe we can bring this one down a little bit further. And, and this one maybe not quite so much. I am a submarine. I am a submarine. Okay, so I think we can probably get rid of this one here. And I am a submarine! Yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's see what it looks like now. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine! Hey there! My... Okay, so I saw a little bit... a little bit too much at the very beginning. Hey there! Right there, maybe. So let's get rid of that one. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth! I am a submarine! Okay. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine! Hey. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's uh, let's get the rest of his body going. Actually, tell you what, let's... Uh, we'll do that separately. It's gonna go ahead and start spinning the, the propeller, but we'll, we'll do that uh, as another action. Actually, speaking of, let's go ahead and, and call this one Henry Seaworth body movement okay and uh, we can kinda since we're treating him sorta like a fish we can kinda just wiggle his his uh, well his, his, his rear end I guess um, have it kinda swimming back and forth as he's kinda just you know hovering there in the water so uh, we'll start off here then hey there maybe come out like this just kinda up a little bit So I'm 
going about not quite 10 frames, looks like about uh, 7 frames, every 7 frames or so. Except for that first one. Hey it actually could be spread out a little further, probably. So let's grab these and maybe drag that one up. Just to, just to move it a little further. So it's more even. As you can see, these little yellow uh, vertical lines here are out, are where the key frames hey are. The same place that they are in here, you can see. So. Hey there! My name is... So this keep going about every, looks like uh, every 18 frames now, so let's jump up to 68. I'll just say 15 frames just to keep it uh, simple. Uh, maybe. There we go. So it needs to go back the other way. Or you can just kind of visualize, visualize. it doesn't have to be mathematically. 100% correct. As long as it's about. As long as it looks right. That's all. Animation is about as long as it looks right. And then all the way to the end, just to give him that final little bit. Okay, so let's see what this is looking like. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine! Hey oh, there! Well, that's not too bad. Now, he's not going to be, if he's in water floating, he's not going to be stock still in the same place. So let's have him kind of bobbing up and down a little bit. So uh, we'll kind of go in the same uh, amount of keyframes as the tail going back and forth, maybe half as much. So right here we're going to go and grab that middle bone, which we called the hip, and just drag it down just a bit to give it a keyframe. And then we'll come hey up. There about to frame 32 and go ahead and raise that up a little bit. My name is 64, so it doesn't have to match up completely with the tail. Actually, probably don't want it to, that just so it looks a little bit more random. And I am a submarine. Okay. Hey there, my name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. Okay, so that kind of looks like he's kind of just floating there in the in the water, doesn't it? So let's turn the layer off that we have the rig on. I'm going to go ahead and save this again. And let's see what he's looking like now. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine! Hey! Okay, so his body movement is looking pretty good. Um, we got the mouth movement. Uh, let's go ahead and get that propeller spinning. So let's go ahead and hit the F button here again, right there. Go ahead and hit the X. And turn our layer back on that has everything. Turn off our automatic insertion. Select everything. Alt R. Alt G, just so it clears out any movement at all. And then I'm going to grab the, the propeller and I'm going to go ahead and hit I and it's going to insert a keyframe and I'll say rotation. Okay. And then we want it to spin fairly fast, but not too fast. We actually want to see it moving. We don't want it to be just a blur because he's not actually moving forward. He's just kind of hovering there. So we don't need it moving very fast at all. So let's just say every 20 frames, it will have made a rotation. So let's hit the R button and then 360 on our keypad and hit the I button again. Rotation, not sure. Since we rotated hey it exactly one time around 360 degrees, uh, it didn't really add any adjustments to it. So let's go ahead and hit that uh, automatic keyframe insertion. And we can keep an eye on the, the amount of degrees you're spinning it, like right here, if you watch. You see right now it says 44.71. If I keep going, all the way to 360. If you hold down shift, it'll be a little more incremental and you can get exactly the number you want. So now, hey there. again, since we rotated exactly one time around, it's not really animated. Hey there. So uh, the easiest way around that is to just rotate it 180 degrees, halfway around. Hey and then there. Spins. Hey there. Hey there. Let's go ahead and turn, let's turn that audio off. Audio scrubbing. Okay, so it should be turning halfway around, but it looks like it's only turning a quarter of the way around. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's get rid of that keyframe there, and uh, let's go ahead and do this again, R180. So it should turn, huh, it should be turning halfway. I'm not sure why it's only turning a quarter. Um, tell you what, right now, let's go ahead and turn this to the graph editor. And we can grab 
propeller and we're only working with the Y rotation. So right now it's going from 0 to 1. Huh. So let's get rid of those and that one. Go back to the 3D view. Huh. Not sure why that's doing that. Should be should be a half circle. So I'll rotate 180 on the Y axis. Perhaps that'll do it. Nope, still only a quarter. Well, to be honest, I don't know why that's doing that because obviously 180 degrees is half of 360 degrees, which is half of a full rotation. So it should be... I guess it's, it's rotating on other axes other than the one that's unlocked. Huh. This is odd. Let me, this is confusing me. Uh, let me pause recording here and, and figure out what the heck is going on with this. So, uh, stand by. I'll be right back. Okay, well, um, I did figure out one way to, to get it to work the way we want. Uh, the rotation of that bone, if we come over here to our bone uh, data here, the rotation motion was set to quaternion, which I guess is quadrants, or I don't, I'm not sure exactly what that stands for or what that means. I know what it means. It means it only rotates it like on a scale of 0 to 1 rather than a scale of degrees 0 to 360 so if we set that to actual axis angle um, you can see that it gives us this W angle up here so we can just rotate it like so and that gives us the actual number of degrees it needs to rotate so let's go back let's get rid of all these keyframes we've messed with there and uh, go ahead and hit the I button so it gives it a keyframe there on that first one and go up to frame 20 and now we can type in 360 go ahead and hit I to insert a keyframe there and now you can see it rotates it all the way around but it kind of starts off slow hey there and slows down hey there speeds up and slows down so what we want to do is make that go the same speed at all times no speeding up no slowing down just maintain a constant speed so the way we can do that Let's go ahead and change this temporarily, this window, to the graph editor again. And you can see this yellow line here now is this W axis angle rotation. We want to make sure that interpolation mode is set to linear. So it's from point A to point B. There's no smoothing in with the Bezier handles or anything like that. So it's going to go one solid rotation. So let's go back to the 3D view. And now you can see it doesn't slow down at all. It just starts spinning the same speed it's supposed to. Okay, so let's name that one um, Henry underscore Seaworth underscore propeller. Propeller, not or. Okay, and um, so we got the mouth, the body, and the propeller. Now all we need is the eyes. So let's go ahead and clear out that. Turn off our automatic insertion so we'll select everything alt G alt R just get everything back to the normal and I'm gonna say new and let's go ahead and call this one Henry C worth underscore eyes okay so now uh, if we go back to the spread eagle guy there hit the little area the uh, little layer that has our eye controllers we can animate that okay so let's just go to our front view and Go ahead and hit the automatic keyframe insertion. Now let's go ahead and have him kind of looking towards where the camera will be. And then, actually, we're on we were on frame five. Let's move that back to frame one. There we go. And we can go ahead and and add the playback audio scrubbing so we can hear what he's saying again. Hey there. I'm just gonna hey there. Hey there. And then maybe he's gonna glance away. thing with eye movement is it's kind of a point-to-point a point 
thing. And there's not a lot of, unless you're watching something that's moving, your eyes aren't going to be following anything. So they kind of just dart back and forth and stay put where they're at. So we don't want a lot of floaty movement between them. So he's going to hey is, but it's not too awful bad, just a little bit. And it darts over there and then kind of just moves ever so subtle, just so it's not a robotic stillness. And then we're going to dart back. Okay. We've got to keep in mind that he's also uh, bobbing his head up and down as he's doing this. So honestly, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and put this eye motion alongside the body movement as we were doing that. But since we're already here, no big deal. We'll just keep going with this. And then kind of just dart maybe up. He's looking up. Kind of thinking about, my name is... Of course, I know his name, but maybe he's a little nervous. I kind of forgot. So we're going to just move it ever so slightly. And then back to looking at us. Some movement a little bit. Maybe dart to the middle. And then dart back to us. Okay, and then maybe just a little bit of movement, and then now he's going to look over and kind of stare off into the distance, maybe. And I, and then he, after he's already started talking, then he turns and looks back at us. Okay, so that should be good on his eye movement itself. Uh, we might need to tweak that once we get everything all put together, because it might just kind of kind of glance at us and then kind of, you know, his head's moving and his eyes are moving with it, so they're not really looking at us. They're just kind of looking in our direction. But uh, in any ways, any case, uh, now we can uh, animate the, the eyelids up, going up and down. So let's go ahead and grab that middle part. Go ahead and drag that up there, like so. And now we can animate that. Maybe he'll blink a few times, too. So let's make our window a little bigger here. Scroll out. Hey there! Hey, hey there! Maybe. Hey there, he's kind of surprised to see you. Hey there! And then... Maybe... Blink. <laughs> okay. My name is... And maybe another blink. And I am a submarine. Okay. So we got the uh, eyelids. Hey maybe. there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. Okay, so when he says. My name, let's have him cock his eyebrow just a little hey bit. Hey there! Ma so we're going to grab this guy. Go ahead and give it a keyframe here because it doesn't have any before that. My name is Henry. Maybe down a little bit. Seaworth. Back up. And up. Maybe go ahead and clear that out and grab this other one. Maybe he wants to cock it. I am Actually, we need to go ahead and get frame over here because it didn't have any before that. I am a, a submarine. Okay. So let's see what that looks like without the rig in its way. Go ahead and clear that. Save. Hey there. My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine! Hey okay. there! Ma I'm sure we're going to have all this stuck in our head all day. Hey there! Hey there! <laughs> but, uh, okay, so we got everything animated the way we want, for the most part. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's bring this window a little bigger, and let's come over here in our 3D viewport and hit the N button and the T button, just so it gets collapses the uh, properties and toolbar. Uh, so we can see our window here a little better. 
And let's go ahead and turn on the layer that has our rig. Select one of the bones, come over here, go to NLA Editor. And uh, right there we see Henry Seaworth Eyes. And... Okay, that's the... Uh, the uh, the actual action strip that we last worked with, so that's the one that's going to be visible. Let's go ahead and hit the little down arrows there, and it's going to turn that into an action strip, and that's okay because that's what we want. And we're going to add another action strip, boom, and we're going to go ahead and say verbal. So now we have both of those hey there. working at the same My time. My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. So we got all of these uh, actions that we created, the the four different ones that we can have all playing at the same time. So we're gonna add all the, the other two, add action strip, and go ahead and delete that out, it's like a search there. Um, and body movement, there we go. It added it where the 3D cursor was. So we're gonna have to add in another track. So add a track, actually select, there we go. Add tracks, there we go. Now we can move that up to there. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. So that looks pretty good. Uh, go back all the way, and then last but not least, we're going to add that propeller spinning. And this one will be a little bit different than the other three. So we're going to add action strip. Go ahead and delete the search field. I'm not sure what adds that in there, but uh, Henry Seaworth's propeller. And you can see that's only 20 frames, whereas everything else is 140 frames. So we have to have that repeat. So if we make this window a little bigger, hit the little plus sign right there and animation data. I'm going to grab that single one there and scroll all the way down and it says repeat. It's only repeating it once. So if we just scroll that out, however, let's see, there's 140 frames and it was, what, 20 frames? So if we say seven times, just type in seven there, it should take it all the way up to frame 140. So we come up here, 134. So it wasn't quite 20 frames. It might have been like 19, I guess. So let's go and just make that a little. It doesn't matter how many re repetitions. You can do it up to 100, but it's only going to count the ones that we get up to the end of our scene, which is 140. So eight, I think, was plenty. Okay, so we're pretty well done with animating this little bit here. If we go back to the very beginning, and let's turn off our rig layer there, and we can play everything we have. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. Hey there! So, okay, we got our little submarine animated, and it looks looks pretty good, I think. So, uh, now the, the next thing to do is maybe add a little bit of an environment. So, tell you what, uh, let's go back all the way to frame one, and let's turn off our key framing, because we're done animating, we just need to add some background. I'm going to hit Shift A, and we're going to add a plane in here. Go to our top view, tab into edit mode, and let's subdivide it a few times. Make our window a little bit bigger here. Hit the little plus sign so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and come in here and hit Control Up, and it's going to maximize our 3D viewport there. Make this a little bigger. Number of cuts. Let's just run that up to eh, four. Is probably fine. Scale that up. This is going to be a, just a background, a little bit of a curved background. Let's grab the. Let's just grab one end of it, and let's turn on our proportional editing. That goes up a little bit. It's not exactly going to be the endless plane that you see in some renders because this is actually underwater and we don't need an endless plane underwater. So we just need a subtle background. So we'll scale that up. Go to our top view. Just run that back there behind him on opposite side of the camera. So this camera is looking right there. We want it directly opposite of it. And then also set the shading to smooth. So if we look through our camera now, zoom out a little bit. I think we're still locked in to the view so lock camera to view there it is go ahead and turn that off and go back to full screen there go to camera view and let's go ahead and zoom it in a little bit let's grab it and we can hit G and then hold down your middle mouse button and kinda of just move it forward and it'll zoom in there and tell you what let's go ahead and lock the camera to view just so we can get it set up exactly the way we want maybe about right there and then maybe move it over to the side some Okay, now we can turn that off. Okay, so one more time. Let's make sure everything's copacetic there. Hey there! Propellers turn My nicely. name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine. Hey! Okay, so that's looking... I'm really happy with the way that came out. So 
Oops, got a notepad here in the way. Move that out of the way there. Okay, so the background. Let's go ahead and make that fit the window there. Maybe scale it on the x, x, x axis there. Okay, and uh, go ahead and minimize that. And let's uh, turn this window into the uh, node editor. And I'm going to give this background a kind of a gradient. So I'm going to hit the new material button there. And I may not be able to do this off the top of my head. I, I was playing with this the other day, and I came up with a figured out a, a nice transition there. But uh, like I said, I may not be able to do it again off the top of my head. I might have to pause and, and go research that real quick. But we'll we'll try. Uh, so let's go add color uh, texture. There we go. Gradient texture. Boom. Right there, like so. And. Yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> I'm not that familiar with cycles, just I have to usually experiment with it back and forth. But uh, let me pause recording. I'm going to go look up how I did that, and I'll be right back. Okay, well, it's actually pretty easy. It's just you got to know what you're doing, what to set up. So we want our material output over here. Good to go. And now, instead of just the diffuse BSDF, um, which we will want that, so I'm not going to delete it, but I'm going to go ahead and cut the cord there. Hit, hold down Control and click and drag. And I'll create a little X-Acto knife type of thing there. Uh, but now I want to add in a mix shader. Scroll all the way up. I'm going to collapse this small. Uh, doesn't give you a lot of room. And put a shader. Mix shader there at the very top. So we'll move that to here. Go ahead and drag that to surface. Tell you what, go ahead and maximize this area here so we can work a little easier. Now is where I use this BSDF. I'm going to drag that over to the shader. And this is going to be one of the colors that it's great being a gradient to, one color and fading into another. Shift D to duplicate that. Drag that over to there. And these are going to be our two colors. So since he's underwater, let's kind of give it kind of an aquamarine type of color, maybe a little darker there. Maybe about right there. And then this next color will be the little deeper area. So this will be more of a, not quite purple, but a lot more, a lot more blue. So maybe a little darker too. So about right there. Okay, so now for our mix factor, this will be the gradient. So we set the color of the gradient over to the factor. But uh, if we were just to let it go like this, it would be a side to side gradient. I don't want that, I want it to be a vertical gradient. So back to full screen. What we're gonna do is add in, um, oh, where is it at? I think it's under vector, yeah, mapping. So I'll go to your vector and mapping, and then we'll connect that to the vector there. And I think we might be able to just go ahead and turn our Y degrees to 90. So if I can control W, and if we hit this box here, nope, I guess I have to tell it one more thing, texture coordinates, and I believe that is input, yes, texture coordinate, there we go. And we're going to go from the generated, so down to vector. Boom. And you can see now we have a nice blue to aquamarine gradient. But they're kind of opposite, so let's swap those. And that's the way we want. So now if we come in here, look through our camera, and go to rendered view, we should have a nice background there. However, I don't want this shadow on it, so we can do one of two things. We can turn this, um, which I guess is probably the, the best option there, um, go to our uh, display there and scroll down to ray visibility, turn off shadow and all of these guys. Actually you gotta turn on camera. Hmm. Welp, I was thinking that that could be an emission which I guess we can just do that and add in the emission. I really wish it gave me the full menu there. Add in a shader where is it at? Emission, 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 emission. There, way down at the bottom. Okay, so let's make this one the same color. And then duplicate that, Shift D, make that the same color. And let's try it with the emission rather than the, the diffuse. So now, there we go, no shadows. And it's really bright, so now we can darken a little bit so it's not being affected by the lamp at all. Go ahead and darken that. And we can go ahead and darken this one. And now we have our nice ocean oceanic background. Now, uh, one further thing I would like to do before we get ready to render it all 
and that's to add in some special effects, some bubbles. So let's um, make the, go back to uh, solid view. And first thing I want to do is add a bubble itself. So I'm going to shift A, and I'm going to use a, an icosphere. So we'll just use that. And uh, this is a little bit smaller geometry-wise than an, uh, a UV sphere, so we'll just use that. And go ahead and set the shading to smooth. So we're going to do that. And go ahead and give it a new material, and we'll call this one Bubbles. Okay, And this is just basically going to be a glass BSDF. So we'll just use it as is. Just a glass, glass material by default. Now we need to have all these bubbles. You can do, you can just grab them and Shift D and just duplicate them and put them where you want, or you can have a little bit more realistic, uh, you know, random movement by just uh, creating a uh, an, um, a particle emitter. So we're going to go Shift A and add in a plane again, just like we did on the background. Let's put this over underneath uh, Henry here. Make it a little bigger there. You rotate it and then scale it on its x-axis so it's a little wider as well. And make sure it's down below him. And now we'll make this a little bigger. Come over to our particles panel. Go ahead and click that. Say new. And let's just go ahead and name it bubbles. You don't have to name it if you don't want to, but uh, we'll just go ahead and name it just so we have that. Okay, and then we'll scroll down here all the way down to render and choose object. And the object is going to be, I guess it'll... Icosphere, go ahead and name that to Bubble 2. Uh, if I can find the item, there we go. We'll say Bubble. Okay, now we'll get that plane and say Bubble. Okay, so now, if we were just to hit play, hey there! You can see it's putting bubbles huh? out and they're random, but they're going down because they're like marbles now instead of bubbles. So we need to turn off gravity for them. So go down to your field weights, expand that out, say gravity, zero. Now, a little bit more, uh, we can say velocity, let's set that to 2, and then set the random to, you can set that to 1, right there. Go ahead and rewind again. Hey there! You can see all those My little bubbles name is Henry so it's nice and natural. And I am They're kind of stopping before they get to the top of the screen. Submarine. Well, some of them are. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth! So what we need to do is tell them to have a longer lifetime. So if we go all the way up to the mission, Set lifetime. It's set to when they come out of the the plane, and they wiggle all the way up to the top. By the time it hits 50 frames later, they disappear. So we want them to stay alive a little longer. That's what their lifetime is. So let's set that to 150. Actually, we can just say 140 because it's the total length of our final animation. So hey there, my name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a the submarine. Top. Hey. So that's good, um, but. They only appear hey the way we want to you know, about 65 frames in. So I'd like them to appear quite a bit earlier than that. So I'm going to tell the start to be negative, we'll say negative 50. So when he's starting off on frame zero, hey you're there. already in the scene. My name is okay, so that's looking good. Um, one thing we need to do to make it look a little bit even more realistic is to set the, the bubbles to have uh, different sizes. So if we go back down to physics right here, uh, right now the size is set to 0 0.05, which is about right. I mean, our normal bubble was right there and huge. We don't want it to be that big, so uh, the 0 0.05 is just fine. But we set the random size. If you look, watch those as I run this slider. You can see some of them stay about the same. Some of them get quite a bit smaller. Some of them get, you know, you know well, same or smaller. None of them get bigger. But uh, we'll run that about 0 0.6. And then now, if we hit... Ms. Uh, Henry Seaworth, it looks a little and more I am a submarine... There might be too many bubbles for just being underwater, you know, unless somebody just jumped in, you know, and carried some of the air with them under their pockets or their arms or whatever. Probably wouldn't see that many bubbles, but uh, we'll take a look and see what it looks like in the rendered view. Now we'll have to grab this, uh, um, the particle emitter plane, and tell it we don't want to render the emitter. So go ahead and turn that off. And we'll also want to move this main bubble, the original bubble, out of our view. So let's just move that over there. Okay, so now if we were to render, um, we should get a pretty decent looking render. Maybe move our camera up a little bit. Let's go grab the camera here, there. Maybe move that up a little bit so he's more in the center of the scene. Hey there, my name is Henry Seaworth. 
Okay, so let's just render this frame here. Just randomly stopped. It hit frame 90. So I'm just going to go ahead and render that out and see what these bubbles and everything look like. They look kind of like gray balls, so I don't want that. Let's go ahead and set our background. That's what it's picking up all that gray from. Let's set that to black. And then... Oh, also... Okay, one another thing. When I was changing the different settings on the background, um, I need to change those back. Let's go down here to set all of these. Let's go ahead and set all of those back on. That way our bubbles can pick them up with the trans transmission and the glossiness and the diffuse and all that. So it just picks those up. So now we render. should look quite a bit better. Yeah, so now they actually look like bubbles instead of just, instead of just um, gray dots. Okay, so uh, one final thing. I say that, one final thing. Let's turn our ambient occlusion on so we get some of that underneath lit up so it's not so dark under there. 1.0 is a little bit too much. I usually put it down to about 0.2. I'm going to escape that out. You can see that looks a little bit better already. Um, rather than render this tiny little window, I'm going to set it to render in a new window. So if I go ahead and save this, go ahead and hit F12, it'll open up a brand new window and render it full size. So okay, all those look like bubbles now, so that's good. Um, okay, so he's ready to render. Um, I'll go ahead and set this rendering, and then once it's done, I'll uh, tag this, stick this video on the end of the tutorial, and, and you can see what the final one looks like. So, Okay, one more thing before we call it a day. Um, you probably want to learn how to, if you don't know already, you want to figure out how to get this out of Blender into an actual video. Well, piece of cake. Uh, right here in your camera little tab, little camera tab right there, uh, we're going to set the... Right now we're doing a resolution of 1280 by 720, which is the, the low HD uh, dimensions. And right now the frame rate is 24 frames per second. You can change that if you like to something else, but we'll just leave it as is. And the output, that's the important part. Now the output, I'm going to hit the little folder there and uh, go ahead and put it in the same folder we're in, which is my Blender Files and Submarine. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and call this one Submarine underscore uh, animation one okay hit enter and then click into there and we'll name each file the same thing as the folder you don't have to do this this is the way I like to do it and I just copy that and then put an underscore at the end so it says submarine underscore animation one underscore and the reason I leave it like this go ahead and accept that the reason I leave it like that is because I render out to a series of images usually JPEGs that's that's the uh, the image format I find that has the best quality for the lowest file size. Make sure the quality is all the way up to 100%. And uh, you could go ahead and render that out by just going up here and hitting animation. And it'll render each frame individually as a JPEG image. So that's handy for, you know, if you want to show off, you know, a, a still animation, or not a, a still from your animation, you can show frame, you know, 120. This is frame 120. Boom, it's done. You don't have to pick up the video and try to shuffle through that certain spot or whatever. So another benefit is if you get halfway through rendering and your computer crashes or the power goes out or something unforeseen happens, you still have all of those 120 frames. You just have to start rendering later at, say, 121, like so. But uh, we're just rendering from frame 1. Um, and uh, if something is wrong with one of the frames that renders incorrectly for some odd reason, you go back and render just that one frame, and you'll have to do everything all over again. So it's really handy to just render out two images, individuals. And then once you get done, you can bring all those in as an image. Uh, in, well, you would go um, add image, and it would add all of these images as an image strip, like right there. And it would add it just like a regular animation. So that's... Uh, that's the way you should render out. You don't have to. If you want to just go out and render out as a video file, you can say H.264 MPEG, whatever, which is what you do after you get all the images rendered out and put them together to render out. But in any case, uh, and if you were to do that, you could say MPEG and then encoding. You want to make sure you in choose, include the, I usually choose MP3 for the audio, so that includes the audio as well. But um, anyway, so that's how you export. So. Again, hopefully that was clear as mud. So, again, thank you for watching this uh, long series 
these long uh, individual episodes. Um, but uh, that's going to be it for this Pixar style submarine series. Stay tuned for that final animation. Hey there! My name is Henry Seaworth, and I am a submarine! <laughs>